Okay, guys. Good morning. So I think we can start. <clears throat> So I'm planning to I'm planning to conduct next class um, at campus. So are you willing to to join? I will. I will join. At what the is? Sorry, yes. Mark. All right. What about Rose, uh, Zulaikha, and uh, Faiz? All right. So I mean, tutorial class. I will conduct it um, at campus, so we can discuss and we can summarize the chapter. All right. So after the tutorial class, you will have a full idea about what we have discussed because I know this one actually this. This course, as I mentioned, is not difficult, but a little bit heavy. All right, so um, at the other class, we can uh, discuss what we have done, and also we can have some scenarios that we can analyze and we can understand better. All right, so I will, uh, I will, I mean, just um, put an announcement after today class and see um, how many students can make um themselves available and uh, hopefully we can uh, run our tutorial class i mean at a um, uk campus directly <clears throat> all right so anyway OK, so um, last class we have actually. Uh, we said start this chapter, which is introduction about what we are going to do. All right, introduction about what we are going to do. We said that we will have both uh, in terms of telecommunication, we will have both wired and uh, wireless. All right. So in in wired system, we have um, two techniques, two common techniques, circuit uh, switched uh, telecommunication system or circuit switched network and packet switched network. So this is in, in wired. And in wireless, we have different, different um, uh, techniques and protocols. And also we we'll try our best to to explain what we call it a little bit about um, multiple access. And if we have some, some time, we can um, explain some advanced modulation technique. All right, advanced modulation technique that's related to uh, wireless. It's not simple modulation technique like what we have done in, in telephony, if you remember AM and FM. Uh, it's a little bit advanced, but it's also it's a very important uh, modulation technique that related to wireless technology. All right, so this is the element that's if you remember for elements uh, for telecommunication system. This one, this one, and this one. So we will focus here. We will say this one will have uh, 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 four chapters or or three chapters. All right. Uh, transport mechanism and this one um, is uh, what we call it error and uh, error detection and, and coding technique this is actually it's another another area all right I think you have one elective course they call it information theory so all information theory will discuss about the uh, error corrections when you are moving from sender to receiver um if any errors take place in between then we have some mechanism to uh, correct and also some uh, coding all right so this one actually is uh, it's not related to this 
and we will be here. All right, so this one we will take wire. All right, wire and wireless. Wire and wireless. And in wire, as I mentioned, we have two common technique. And here we have many techniques. All right. Okay. We have discussed about <clears throat> um, about uh, circuits. All right. Circuits switched. Uh, this one switching method. All right. We discussed briefly about this one. Circuit switching techniques. And today we will start by this one. All right. Also brief. Also uh, brief, not details, because we will we will discuss in in detail after this uh, after this class. Okay. Uh, so in um, in circuit switching, we have <clears throat> we have what you call it the space division or crossbar, and also we have uh, time slot uh, interchange. So we're going to design this one. All right, maybe by next class. Uh, during the tutorial if we have some time then maybe i can explain about the design of this one or maybe we can start by next week and after that we will have another tutorial to uh, to design um, using um, a space division all right and um, yeah also this one we will we will discuss in coming chapters and <clears throat> And in packet switching, uh, we have what you call it the datagram and we have virtual circuits. All right, two common techniques. This one actually it's a um, uh, messaging uh, switching. I mean, in, in switching method, we have one, two, three, but this one actually is very uh, uh, seldom and very rare to, um, to use. All right, the most common techniques are uh, circuit switching and uh packet switching all right so um, we will explain a little bit by today class about this one datagram and uh, uh, virtual circuits the differences between virtual circuit and and datagram okay so this one actually we have we have done it if you remember we said this one actually we have a setup phase that means before you make you can, I mean, communicate with your with your friend. This one is a physical uh, path will be created. All right, and after that, the data will follow this, the created path exactly. All right, so the data will follow this created path. OK, uh, and once the, the call is ended, then this one will be active again all right yeah and this one we call it we call it interchange office or switching office okay we explain all that one um, and this one the data transfer using the uh, adsl we said we have a special technique on call it a splitter all right, to split the voice um, and data. All right, so one line for voice and the other line will be goes for uh, <clears throat> for data. All right, so this one actually we can we can use this one in order to design uh, uh, what we call it here. This one space division. Also, we can adopt that particular. I mean, in terms of design, this one actually we can we can do many things. All right, even the difficulty level um, would be very high if we would like to have some um, difficult scenarios. For example, we would like to do some <laughs> some uh, connections or telephone system in in small area. For example, in in Doha City or in in Amadi or some other some other areas where I mean we have some I mean um, number of of population there then we need to use I mean some advanced uh, advanced level so we have I mean flexibility here we can start maybe by 
small scenario, but that scenario can be generalized, all right, to some uh, high level scenarios. Okay, so this one also can be can be adopted, all right, it will be one of the uh, possible scenarios that we can adopt in order to design uh, circuits switched network. Okay. All right, so this is just a summary and also we will, uh, during our tutorial class, we will revisit uh, again all the uh, the concepts, but in terms of some, maybe can we have some, uh, some scenarios that combine um, some techniques, all right? So maybe packet switching together with uh, circuit switching technique. Anyway. So the packet switching, uh, the concept actually is totally different. Uh, this one, packet switching technique is totally different from, from that one, circuit uh, switching. All right, and circuit switching, if you remember, there is a physical path between sender and receiver. All right, some switch, some switch, switch, switch until you reach the destination. And the whole data will follow this uh, uh, dedicated uh, path. All right, the data will follow this one. But in terms of packet switching, the story will be totally different. So the data will be divided into a small, small uh, groups or bunch, okay, and each block will follow different path, all right? Each block will follow different path. And at the destination, all small, small groups, they will rejoin together again, but it might reach in different order. So for example, I use this one, block one, two, three, and four. And as I mentioned in packet switching, all right, in packet switching, if I have a sender here and a receiver here, so I have uh, different, different paths. Okay, let's make it, uh, Okay, let's three. Okay, so this is my data. I grouped into four groups: one, two, three, and four. So, for example, one will follow this path. Two and three will go for this path, and four will follow this path. So this is one, two, three, and four. All right. So at destination, it might receive like. Uh, four, two, three, and one, or four, one, two, and the three. All right, so it's my reach in different order. <clears throat> so how to correct the order? This is actually beyond the scope of this course. All right, this one actually network layer and, and above, but we will explain the mechanisms. All right, the mechanisms, how how the packets switching uh, uh, works, all right? And it's really tough scenarios and uh, you really need a uh, high level of programming skills, especially in C++, in order to uh, make what we call it a uh, proper packet switching uh, networks, all right? So this is the main difference. This is the main difference between packet switching network and uh, what we call it the circuit switching network. In this one, we have a physical path and a permanent path since we have a call, uh, ongoing call, all right? So this is you and this is your friends. Since you are communicate, then this path is valid, all right? This path is valid. Once you end your 
your session, then this one will be um, available again, active again, and the data will follow, the whole data in same order will follow the, the dedicated path from uh, sender to receiver. But in this one, the uh, story is totally different. And um, and the packet, it's uh, travel using different paths and it's my reach, different order and it might reach in delay. All right, so we have another story starting from here at the receiver, but this one will be higher layer. All right, it's because we agreed that in this telecommunication, we are in physical data link and slightly we touch uh, a network layer. All right, slightly we touch network layer, not details, because when I said network, it's a matter of, of programming, it's a matter of creating some tables, we call it routing tables and all the related stuff in terms of addressing and all that stories. All right, so these two techniques, do we have some, so may I can ask you some question, do we have another technique, guys? Do you have any idea if we have some, something in between? Ross. So we have packet switching and we have circuit switching. Do we have any technique in between? What do you think, Ross? Mm, no idea, sir. No idea. All right. So, Martin, what do you think, Martin? I don't know. No idea, Laban. <clears throat> Sorry, sir, I missed up some stuff, so I don't know. Uh, I said here we explained the uh, circuit switching and packet switching. So my question is, do we have any technique in between? Or only we have this one and that one? Packet and circuit. Any idea? Anything is possible. Maybe there are some techniques, but no. we... okay. So, yeah, so there might be. We never All right. and we haven't studied about it. Okay. What about you, Fayez? Uh, any yeah, idea? Uh, which one is more efficient data for transport? Okay, uh, Shalau, do you have any idea? <clears throat> Hanas, any idea? Sir, there's always more ways to do something. Okay, Zulaikha, any idea? Sorry, I don't have any idea. All right. Okay, guys. Okay. So we we have done actually this one, circuit switch and packet switch. We we understand the difference between uh, between them. And my question is that: Do we have some some techniques in between? If we go back to this one. All right. We go back to this one. We can see this one circuit switching. This one packet switching. So, what do you think? Which is the technique? Is the technique in between? Now we have this one. All right, and we have this one. What do you think, guys? All right. You so, message switching. Uh, uh, no, not this one. You can have a look to this one. Virtual circuit. All right, so it's a circuit similar to this one circuit. So in virtual circuit will be combination of both circuit switching and packet switching. But this one actually will be like an, a virtual. What do you mean by virtual? So that means will take both techniques. That means this one can be a dedicated between uh, sender and receiver, but will be on demand, all right? Only if 
there is a demand, then the circuit will be installed. Otherwise, there is no possibility to create some physical circuit. And also can be a packet, all right? Because when I said virtual circuit, I use the circuit from circuit, but the technique will be following the packet switching. That means the data gonna split into groups, small, small groups, and will be sent through a uh, uh, visual uh, circuit, all right, visual circuit. So in packet switching, we have what you call a datagram, all right, datagram, we'll explain a little bit up, uh, about it because, I mean, the datagram will be normal packet switching technique. That means the data will be divided or split into small, small um, chunks or groups. And this one, um, this one will follow, I mean, different, different path, and this one will be like a virtual circuit. So my question is that do we have technique between uh, circuit switching and packet switching? Yes, we have, and the answer is this one. Virtual circuit technique. So when I said virtual circuit, it's a, uh, it's a com combination between both packet and switching. You can see it's switched virtual circuit and permanent. So if I said permanent, it's similar to this one. <clears throat> but the data still, I mean, split it into small, small data. When I said switched, it's similar to datagram or, I mean, the concept that I have explained, uh, packet switching. All right, guys, so... <coughs> yes, we have... We have some technique in between. All right, which is virtual in, in packets. All right, in packets, uh, we have VC and datagram. Data or DG, datagram. All right. Okay, so this is, I mean, um, brief about. Um, uh packet switching all right this is the the main idea of, of uh, packet switching all right so internet actually we are, we are working on our internet and uh, internet normally adopts uh, uh, packet switching techniques all right so internet protocol provides datagram service Okay, and and transfer of, of packets information across multiple possibility or dissimilar networks. All right, so the the internet, computer network, and uh, packet switching. So an internet normally uh, use a, a packet switching uh, network, and. Um, uh, for this one is ARPA net, which is uh, A from advance. This one research. P is a project, so advanced research project agency network. All right. It's like um, a group that um, uh, research a group that um, produce some standards that related to uh, data communication and uh, telecommunication systems and networks. All right, so. Um, OK, so IP, the Internet protocol made information possible to transfer in form of packets. All right across many dissimilar networks, all right? So, I, I mean, the details of this one, it's, uh, uh, the details of this one will be at higher, higher layers, all right? If you remember, we have five layers or seven layers, depend on the uh, standard, all right? So this one is physical layer, PHY. And this one, 
data link layer and this one network layer. All right, so if we are talking about this one, here we have another another layers transport and something like applications and sessions. And, all right, so if we are talking about the uh, IP and um, uh, the, the mechanism would be uh, starting from network to the uh, upper layers. All right, but uh, this is just an example about the packet switching uh, technique and uh, normally adopted in in internet protocol. All right, internet protocol. All right, so we have, I mean, um, some some techniques that um, what we call it how the terminals are are connected and different terminals can communicate with each other so we have what we call it uh, this one terminal oriented oriented network the time shared computers and cables for onboard device so for example we have a, a computer and we have some some terminals all right terminals directly connected terminals directly connected to to uh, computers this one we call it time shared all right time shared uh, service telecommunication uh, service and for dial in if we have dial in then we have uh, we need to have a modem all right we need to have a modem for example computer connected to a centralized computer or normally we use computer this one actually is a computing for computing device or monitoring or or data acquisition terminal actually it's like for example we we can use computer to control speed of motor all right speed of of motor so this one will be terminal we can use a computer to control uh, for example traffic lights all right traffic light so the computer will be uh, used as a computing or monitoring device to control some terminal terminal will be traffic light or we can use the central units for example computer to control the speed of of cable cars or telefreak for example so the telefreak or cable car will be will be terminal and computer will be uh, central unit. All right. So this is, I mean, for example, you may ask the difference between this one and this one, CNT. For dial in, also if we have a centralized, if we have a centralized, we have terminal terminal, which is in this particular scenario will be a phone. So in this case, we need a modem. All right. We need a modem to move from, uh, for example, digital to analog, and again from, from um, uh, analog to digital if we are using uh, computer to computer through some terminals or if we are in terminals we so we need a modem in, in between so depend on depend on uh, uh, applications all right depend on applications how the structures will be looks like and also we have what we call it the sharing a multi-drop line all right multi-drop line so this is a line like like if you remember in, in networking, we have the uh, star connections, we have circle connections, we have some other types of connections. So similar to that, but this one actually is related to, to telecommunication. When we said telecommunication, that means it's a far communication, all right? It's a far communication. It's not like a computer uh, networking. Uh, maybe within some area you have a, a network that one we cannot say the a telecommunication network we call it the computer networks all right so again uh, we have c and t's but here we have a shared shared multi-drop line so from this we drop to one terminal this point to another terminal and this one to another terminal this one to another terminal so it depends how many terminals we have all right so um, uh, what's the important things here? Um, medium access control, all right, medium access control. So that means when I said 
sharing a multiple line. This one will be. Uh, this one will be. Second layer. All right, this one. All right, will be here. All right, will be second layer. All right. So um, allow number of terminals at different locations to communicate with central computer using what you call it shared communication line. All right. So here we have, yeah, this one actually is very important. The most important point in this uh, uh, multi drop. They have what we call it a master slave communication arrangement. All right, master slave communication arrangement and all terminals listen to the ongoing line, but only the terminal pulled replies. All right, so that's why we call it here pull to terminal and response from terminal. So he said the master slave communication arrangement like a um, like a master slave in uh, in flip flops design digital techniques. If you remember that techniques. We have uh, master slave flip flop design, so same concept exactly. That mean one will be a master, one terminal will be a a master and another will be a a slave. All right, so when I need to reply, reply from a uh, a master. All right, reply from a a master. Like all terminals listen to the ongoing line, but only the terminal pulled uh, replies. <coughs> so another techniques that can uh, use in order to provide uh, efficient uh, data communication, I will call it the multiplexer. All right, multiplexer system. So what do you mean by multiplexer, guys? Any idea? Can you remember the multiplexer? Rose, any Sir, idea? Sir, I think. Uh -huh, yes, go ahead. I think it's like either it takes in a digital and gives out uh, analog or vice versa. Is it something like that? All right, thank you, Hannes. I will, uh, I will give you some feedback. OK, what about uh, Rose? Rose, do you have any idea about multiplexer? It uh, takes several digital signal. OK, yeah. Dean, multiplexer. Um, it's combining a lot of input. OK, Lavan, thank you, Martin. All right, Fayez. Any idea, Fayez? So the combination of circuit that's related from the binary. All right, uh, Zulaikha, what about you, Zulaikha? All right, so what you have said is, is OK. Uh, I mean, it's we have combination of. All right, normally multiplexer we use it in, in microprocessor in. In digital techniques. Um, multiplexer and, and the multiplexer we can take some. Some some inputs and you can multiplex transmit. All right. And after that, demultiplex. All right. So multiplexer and demultiplexer. So this one actually is the basic of, of logic uh, uh, techniques. All right. Like flip flops, multiplexers, uh, the logic gate, if you remember. So most of that techniques we can adopt it in order to what you call it uh, uh, design a. Um, Proper telecommunication, especially at receiver and uh, uh, sender. All right. So when I said multiplexer, I can take. You can see some terminals. All right, terminals, terminals, all combined. All right, multiplexed. All right, multiplex. 
<clears throat> so sharing communication line among terminals. All right, here also we shared communication line among terminal, but it's different. This one we call it multi drop line. All right, multi drop line. OK, so in in uh, in tutorial, maybe I can give you some some scenarios. All right, so. Uh, I put you in, in a certain scenario and you can think and design your your own. Um, uh, for example. Uh, a communication line, all right, among some terminals. All right, so here we have how the. Uh, how the, the data will be uh, forwarded. So for sure we need to have an address. All right, if you would like to. To visit your friends. All right, so for sure you in your mind you have uh, an address. All right, if you would like to come to a UK. In your mind, a UK address will be there. All right, so that's why you will follow a uh, specific uh, route. All right, so address actually is very important. So we'll take some parts from the from the message. All right, and also we have the information what you are going to uh deliver all right for example you want to say hello or you want to say hi how are you all right so this is the information and this one crc will be uh what do you think guys this one crc do you remember that one cyclic redundancy check if i'm not mistaken this one normally used for error control techniques all right error control techniques so this one for error correction error corrections cyclic uh, redundancy uh, check or circles i can't really uh, remember the the full name but this one actually it's for error so any error connection if you remember in network essentials we explained uh, uh, i mean details on this one we have some tutorials and we uh, um, if you remember, give you some some a message combination of zeros and ones, and after that we need to adopt this one in order to check the the errors. So there is some techniques, all right, and um, uh, all this one will be the message, all right. All this one will be the message. So address information and uh, CRC, or we can adopt uh, some other techniques. Actually, is not only this one available, but this is just an an example. All right, so message are encapsulated inside a frame that consists of a header and user message. All right, header and user message. And header provide address that identifies the terminal. And error control techniques to ensure virtually error free communication. All right, error, <coughs> error free communication of uh, a data information. All right, so. This is the frame that we have. All right, frame that we have. Um, header that contain address and message body. Sometimes we call it that information and uh, uh, error bits. All right, or error control techniques. Here, error control techniques. Uh, we put CRC. Maybe you can use some other techniques. All right. So error control techniques to ensure virtually error free communication of of data information. All right. So this is actually the what you call a typical oriented terminal oriented network. All right. Uh, uh, circa like 70s. All right. Uh, host San Francisco's we have um, multiplexer. Chicago also we have a multiplexer. Atlanta we have multi drop line you can see. All right, so multi drop line. So I can put you inside a scenario similar to this one. All right, for example, you are in Doha. We have some cities. Uh, Simil, we have uh, Amadi. We have uh, we have some other cities like uh, Zaho also. All right, and ask you maybe you can use some multiplexer or some some multi drop and in order to communicate from one city to another city. So 
it's there's there's a possibility, all right? There's a possibility to design some telecommunication, all right, using different um, uh, shared communication techniques, all right? So I mean, the, the concepts when we set here typical terminal oriented network, circa like say 1970s. So the concept actually is almost same, all right? The concept is is almost same. So this one actually is around. All right, it's around uh, 70, but the concept actually uh, almost the same. The changes in terms of data rate, speed, and and the GIS technology, if you if you remember first generation, second generation, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so in terms of uh, uh, packet switching uh, networks, all right, to transfer message from any computer connected to the network to any other computer connected to the uh, network like an like an internet all right like an like an internet and uh for example this one the in terms of uh, the uh, efficiency Transmission time should be short, especially for interactive application. Um, all right, so packet switching network address this problem. Um, this one, I mean, in terms of computational um, computational efficiency. All right, so data will be chunked into several packets before being transferred. At receiver data are then recovered from individual packet or uh, and again all right so how uh, if you if you see here <clears throat> so if we have a big data uh, we said in packet switching uh, the data are gonna divide it or split it into small small chunks all right or so groups so for example here we have one two three four so one will be follow this one and two three follow this path and four will follow another path all right so now the processing time of this one the processing time of this one will be much simpler compared to the processing time of the entire packet all right and the processing time of this one also will be much simpler and more efficient compared to the processing time of the entire packet and this one also all right so in terms of in terms of performance in terms of performance and in terms of what we call it computational complexity computational complexity this one will be uh, very good all right this one is very efficient uh, techniques all right very efficient techniques in terms of time saving because I'm not going to send and I'm not going to do the processing for the entire, all right, for the entire message. OK, I'm going to split it and take care about only small, small group. So it will be very fast. All right, it will be very fast. So this is what you mean when we said here, packet switching network address this problem. Transmission time should be short because the data will be chunked into several packets before being transferred. All right, so the processing time for this one will be uh, much uh, better compared to the processing time for the entire circuit. OK. So this is how it works. Um, this one packet, packet switched, all right, and this is PCs from here. OK. Also, if I would like to communicate, if I would like to send from this PC, let's say one, two, this one two, all right, then I, this is my packet, or this is my message frame, okay, I divide it into one, two, and three. So when it comes here, for example, one will follow this direction, uh, two, and three, for example, follow this direction. So one will be here again. All right, two, three, or two, three will be here. And two will follow this. 
okay combine with one here one will be comes from this direction and two comes from this direction and the three comes from this direction so odds odds here at the receiver for sure we have some some techniques in order to uh, recover it. all right individual packets or reassembled recombined together so that means the <coughs> The message will be divided and forwarded using different different paths. Here also, uh, this one, uh, the one that we said, it's advanced research projects agency net. So this one should be capital. This one around 72, circa 72. So um, it's a uh, different. Um, um, what we call it, uh, uh, nodes, all right, here, computers, nodes using connectionless, uh, connectionless packet switching across wide area network, wide area network, all right, so different, different cities all together connected by using uh, packet switching, all right. So we we'll explain here why we call it connectionless. Connectionless. Connectionless, yeah. All right. We mentioned it here. No, somewhere I can't remember. Okay, to explain afterward. <coughs> All right. So the main features of this one, um, the advanced research um, projects agency network provide high-speed digital transmission uh, packets between uh, adjacent uh, packet switches are transferred inside of of frames that contain some information as well as check bit for error control i mean it's like like providing a a protocols a protocols that that facilitate the movement of uh, or the implementation of uh, um, a packet switching all right packet switching and also including here for example routing table all right routing table must be uh, must be created all right routing table must be created but actually this one is beyond uh, beyond the scope of uh, of of this course all right so for example messages are segmented into packets at the ingress and reassembled at the egress of the network um, exit and and uh, uh, entrance and exits of, of the networks okay and also provide some mechanism end-to-end -end congestion control mechanism congestion and and error control all right error control and all the applications that lay on the transfer of message between computers are are developed uh, by this one all right the advanced research uh, projects agency uh, networks okay so as I mentioned, the internet is one of the um, what you call it applications of of packet uh, switching. All right, packet switching. All right, and um, uh, this one. <clears throat> All right, this one here is the internet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't want to. I mean, to go details of, of, of that one, just I would like to say that 
the internet actually normally used uh, uh, packet switching uh, techniques, all right, in order to provide some um, high speed, all right, using the standard internet protocol IP, all right, IP. And in this one, we have different, different versions, IP version 4 and IP version 6. So you can you can check your, your, your PC uh, to check which version you are you are using, either IP version 4 or IP version uh, version 6. Mm, all right. Um, here the internet and the World Wide Web are not a synonyms. All right, the internet is a collection of interconnected computers, while the web is a collection of interconnected documents. All right, so this is, I mean, general, uh, general, all right, because when we said internet, that means it's a packet, but when we said world wide web, it's not, it's not, I mean, the packet mechanism or packet switching, but normally we combine between internet and www all right <clears throat> okay so here is is, is, a, is a similar for example we have a host all right host hosts and host so in this case we have what you call it a, a gateway all right like a like like a switch for example in in circuit switching, all right, network one, each network is connected by a gateway, and this one, the packet will be uh, provided, the data, we have address, we have address of this one, we have address of that one. If you remember, guys, in, in our lab, Network Essential, we have designed some network similar to this one, and we have done the programming of of the router itself and the network itself by providing IP address here, by providing IP address here, and by providing the address of the next route. All right, so I can, if I would like to deliver my message from this one following this route, then I need to, uh, I need to do the programming at this gateway by adding the address of this one. Okay, so if I didn't include the address here, the message will be not delivered to, uh, so, for example, this one, net four. Uh, so, um, this 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 network actually can be created by packet tracer. If you remember the software, we call it packet tracer. It's provided by Cisco. It's a freeware. So you can download that software and you can create uh, any network that you would like, and also you can test it. All right, you can uh, you can test your network whether it works. So um, I remember we have done around five uh, networks, different network setups, I mean wired and wireless at that time. And we have tested our, our network and the packets moved smoothly from one source to, to another destination. All right, so... Um, All right. So, in terms of in terms of um, definition, interconnect set of packet switching exchange. This one, PS, is packet switching uh, exchange, uh, either CO or CL. CO is the connection oriented, and CL is connectionless. All right. CO is connection oriented and CL is a connection, uh, connectionless. For the connection oriented, as a, known as a virtual connection or virtual circuit, example of this one is this protocol and this protocol X.25. This one actually is still, I mean, used, but in, in certain, certain area. This one, the last, for example, in the US, if I'm not mistaken, in 2015, they uh, they end this protocol if I'm not mistaken, but I mean uh, worldwide still I mean adopted in some some areas, all right. And for connectionless, no initial setup needed. Each packet 
carry full source and destination address in its header and uh, for routing uh, purposes. All right, so that's why we call it connectionless. That means there's no, no available uh, permanent uh, uh, resource. So each packet will be treated independently. All right, each packet will be treated independently. <clears throat> All right, so the message, original message is broken into uh, small packets. Encapsulation control information is added at each protocol layer. Uh, for example, this one, all right, would like to communicate through a packet switching network. All right, packet switching network. Then um, here is the, uh, the frame. All right, the data. Uh, header, normally we have the address where we are going. This one is address and this one layer two bits for the uh, data link and <coughs> higher layer. And this one checksum is for error. All right, checksum is one, this one for error control. Error, error control. Okay, so in between here we have, we have a packet, I mean we have different, different path. All right, different different path from here, from anywhere. All right, so that means the packets will follow. All right, the packets will follow. All right, so this is the uh, packet switching techniques. All right, the types that normally used in in packet uh, in packet switching. We have connectionless datagram. And we have connection oriented or virtual uh, circuit. Virtual circuit, we have either permanent virtual circuits or we have switched virtual uh, circuits. All right, so let's, I mean, discuss a little bit on, on this one. All right, so in, in one of the the notes that I would like to say here that in, um, I mean, when we set packet switching, you can see here, guys. So we would like to uh, send some message, all right, from one end, let's say this one end or or node or whatever to another end. All right, so our aim in telecommunication or in data communication, we need to send some message from this end to another end. All right, so if the message passes through packet switching network, then we call it packet switching techniques. All right, so if the message passes through circuit switched network, the technique we call it circuit switching networks. All right, so in, in packet switching, in this one, in packet switching, there is no resource allocation for a packet. All right, there is no resource allocation for a packet. What do you mean by resource allocation? In circuits, if you remember, this one would like to communicate with this one. And here in between, here in between we have some switching. All right, one, two, three, for example, another one, two, three, for example, then one, two, three, one, two, three, and this one connect to, all right, another three, and this one, if you remember, all right, I take for example this one and here is one, two, three and one, two, three. All right, so uh, this one, it's my connect to this one. This one, it's my connect to this one and this one can move to this one and this one move to this one. We're going to design this one by when we when we reach to circuit switching crossover. All right, and this one, it's a multi. For example, I can use N times N. All right, n times n. 
here n times n. OK, for example, 3 times 3, this one. So whatever, I mean, the details will be afterward. So this one is a resource. So the resource is there. Resource allocation for each node will be there and permanent. But in packet switching, there is no resource allocation for a packet. All right, so that means there is no reserve bandwidth. That means, for example, if you are talking about data communication, there is no such uh, bandwidth available on a links. All right, there is no bandwidth available on a links, but only resources are allocated on demand. All right, resources are allocated on demand. If there is a demand, then resource will be allocated. Otherwise, no resource will be allocated. No resource will be allocated. All right. So if you are talking about this one, datagram, if we are talking about this one, datagram, so in this case, each packet actually is treated independently. So if we have different packets, one, two, three, and four. So datagram, each packet, each packet will be treated independently. So that means I will take care about one. I don't care about two, three, and four, whether it received or no, I don't care. I take care only about one, all right? So another path will take care about only two. I don't care about one, three, and four, all right? Even if, if it is lost, I don't care. I take care about two, I send it. Since I deliver two to destination, that's it. My job will be perfect, all right? It's not like this one, data will be whole. All data will be moved from one end to another end. But in datagram, each packet treated independently. All right, so <clears throat> even if, as I mentioned, some, some packets are, are lost, then it's no, no matter. All right. So this is example of circuit switching. All right, this one is circuit switching. So we can take an example of this one packets if you would like to. For example, um, uh, what we can take an example. Um, if I can say like a datagram, all right. All right, like say datagram. And I have, for example, here is a one that can exchange. All right, here also I have some device that can exchange connections all right and in between also i have some that you can provide all right so this one from here from here and this one connected for example to this one and this one and this one and this one connected and this one connected all right so I need to communicate from A and I need to reach B. All right, so this one, I said that the message using datagram, all right, but the message will be divided in two packets. Am I right? Because I'm using packet switching, two, three, and four. All right. So when it comes to here, for example, two will follow this direction. All right. And three, let's say one, follow this direction. Four will follow this direction. This one also connected to this one. All right. So one, it's my change to this direction. OK, and we'll combine with four. And two will move this way. And the three, it's my follow this direction. All right, so at the, at the receiver, 
the message, for example, because this one actually is the very fast. You can see one and two. All right, so but this one, one, two and the three, this one, one, two, then two and the three will reach first. Two and the three will will reach first. And after that, four and one. All right, two, three, four and one. Um, all right, so so this one actually in datagram, this one we can call it as a router. All right, this one, this one, this one we can call it as a router. All right, and this how the packets will be uh, divided and transfer from source to destination. All right, for example, two would be very fast because two changes, one and two, three as well, one and two, one and four after that. All right. So sometimes this one, we call it connectionless. You can see. Sometimes I call it connectionless packet switching. Sometimes I call it datagram. All right. Sometimes I call it datagram. So this one, the terms actually connectionless means that the switch, all right, does not keep information about the connection state. This one does not keep any information about the connection connection state. If it is lost, it's lost. All right. If it is lost, it's lost. There's no any state that or any information about the uh, uh, connection state. There is no setup like circuit switching. There is a setup and there is a release. All right. Uh, for four phases, if you remember, setup phase transfer, error, and after that release, all right? But in this case, there is no setup, there is no release, and there is no state of formation for the packet. So that's why we call it, sometimes we call it connectionless, all right? Sometimes we call it connectionless. And for the virtual, <coughs> for the virtual circuit, all right, for the virtual circuit, we said that the virtual actually is something in between. All right, virtual, this one, virtual circuit, connection oriented, or I sometimes I call it virtual circuit. All right, either I call it connection oriented or I call it virtual uh, circuit. So virtual circuits, in virtual circuit, there is setup similar to this one. All right, setup and breakdown phase, so that means I need, when I have some data to transfer, I need to create uh, a link, and at the end, I need to release that, that link, all right. So, resource also will be allocated during the setup phase, uh, similar to this one, circuit switch, but also can be, can be allocated on demand, similar to packet switching. So, in terms of resource, that means this one, the links all, all in between can be pre-connected similar to uh, circuit switching or can be allocated by on demand so similar to packet switching so either packet switching mechanisms or circuit switching mechanisms and this one the virtual circuit similar to circuit switching that means the data will follow some path one path the dedicated path so that's why it's packet switching, but it's a virtual circuit or virtual path. All right, and. Um, <clears throat> virtual circuit, this one, this one in terms of implementation, this one in terms of uh, implementation will be. For example, this is the layers. This is very important. All right. In terms of implementation, this one circuit switching will be physical layer, but this one virtual switch will be data link layer. All right, data link layer. So this one actually is not same. They are totally different even in terms of implementation. Okay. 
So, I mean, and if we have a permanent, if we have a permanent, that means the link will be permanent, but the packets will follow uh, uh, different different lines. All right, so it's like permanent, like a switch, but the packets will follow different uh, uh, different path. In circuit switch, the whole message will follow one path, but in this one, one packet will follow this, another packet will follow this, another packet will follow this, so it depends. All right. So this is actually a summary of all the packet switching types. <clears throat> yeah, so it's method of slicing digital into packet sending along. Yeah, here's for example a packet one, packet two, packet three, similar to what we have done here. All right. And types of telecommunication. It works um, in terms of signaling. We have digitals and analog. All right, digitals and 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 analog. <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, this one actually is really a broad uh, broad area. I mean, both digital and analog. We have both uh, modulation. We have demodulation. We have processing here. We have processing here. That, but in terms of what we need in in telecommunication, we need just to how we can switch from one form to another form. And this one can be done by using modem. All right, modulation, demodulation, digital to analog, analog to digital. And also we have the local area networks and we have some other networks like wide area networks and uh, uh, MANs, all right, uh, metropolitan area networks or MANs. And also we have uh, uh, here, W, we can add W, wireless, wide area network, and this one, all right, and wireless LAN, all right. <clears throat> so I think I will stop here for a break for um, um, we will be back at 10.30, <clears throat> so almost around 15 minutes, all right. Um, and we will continue the, the remaining of this chapter. Okay, guys? Okay, sir. Okay, All right. sir. Okay, sir. All right, thank you.
Hello guys. <coughs> Hello, sir. <clears throat> okay, so I think we can start. So this is the last part uh, from this uh, from this chapter, uh, which is wireless networks. All right. Again, this chapter actually is a summary of what you are going to do. Uh, we said that we will have uh, uh, both wire and wire uh, wireless. All right, wired and wireless. And in wire, we have two common techniques, circuit switching and packet switching. We briefly explain this one, briefly explain this one. And for wireless, also we have uh, upcoming uh, some few slides <coughs> to discuss the wireless. And after that, we will go uh, some details on this one, details on packets and uh, details on um, uh development of uh, of wireless all right but we will start from 3g 3g uh, 4g and uh, 5g all right first generation second generation it's uh, it's not related to uh, to this one because first and second it was not like a networks but starting from 3G, uh, wireless networks um, becomes more attractive where we can see some videos by using our um, mobiles and I mean we can we can starting from <coughs> 3G subscribers can enjoy the uh, the uh, uh, wireless features of, of, of wireless. All right, so that's why in mobile communication, normally start from first generation, second generation, and uh, we continue 3G and 4G. But in wireless networks, uh, normally from 3G onward. Anyway, <coughs> all right, so um, a wireless um, uh, local area networks or WLAN. All right, so wireless local area network you are familiar with. All right, we have our <coughs> wireless uh, LAN in, in our houses. So it's a wireless local area network that uses radio waves as its carrier. All right. Uh, so the last link with the user is a wireless to give a network connections to all users in a building or uh, campus and the backbone network usually use a cable. All right, so it's a normal normal wireless. We have, we have, uh, this one is a router. All right, so this one connected by cable. All right, cable. And from here, it's a wireless. All right, so all devices can connect wirelessly, can connect wireless. So the last link with the user is a wireless, and the backbone network usually uses uh, uh, cables. All right, so it's, um, I mean, very familiar, familiar of, of this one. All right. Um, all right, so do we have, um, and for example, scenarios where we can connect both wireless and wire. So uh, why not? This one also can be connected. All right, can be connected. Combination of, of wireless and and wire as well. And also in those who have, I mean, taking network essentials with me, 
last time we have designed uh, similar to this one, if you remember, which is combination of wireless and wired. And also in terms of access point, we need to do the programming of all the possible routes. Okay, and also this one, we need to do the programming of all the possible, uh, sorry, the, the, the address of, of the access point. All right. So also you can you can use the you can download the packet tracer Cisco packet tracer uh, and you can you can construct your own uh, networks either 100% wired network or 100% wireless network or a mix all right or a mix <clears throat> so if we have this one then we have some access point all right so this one by uh, wired and this one actually it's like similar this one can be this one wireless to all devices in this wireless networks and this wireless networks can be connected to a uh, wired network all right wired network through the access point you can construct you can construct even a simple network in your in your home you have your mobile, then your mobile can be connected to some some other device via hotspot. You can make yourself as access point. All right, you can turn off. If you have a data, you can turn on your your hotspot. Then your friends can be connected to you. All right, so you will be like an access point. All right. So we have different types of um, of what you call it, the uh, wireless networks. Um, yeah, all right. Um, so the physical size of the network determined by the maximum real, uh, reliable propagation range. Um, yeah, so this one, for example, in, in normal Wi-Fi, we have around uh, 50 meter or less than that. All right, we can we can access maybe less than that. And this one, it's an ad hoc network. All right, what do you mean by ad hoc networks? Uh, any idea about ad hoc networks, guys? Ad hoc network. We have centralized network and we have an ad hoc network. Um, who's there? Hanas, any idea about ad hoc networks? No, uh, sir. All right. Uh, uh, Zanyar, Zanyar Hassan, any idea about ad hoc networks? Mm, Martin. No. Rose. It's direct connection without uh, need of router. All right. Okay. Uh, actually, we cannot say without need of routers because routers, it can be any uh, any device in between. All right. Router is just that a device coming message from here and forward it to another to another point. So it might be mobile, all right? It might be mobile, it might be a tablet, tablet or it might be a physical router, all right? It might be a physical router. So when we said ad hoc network, we can see this one, there is no infrastructure. There is no infrastructure. That means device to device, device directly to device. For example, an example of ad hoc Bluetooth. So I can switch on my Bluetooth. And you can switch on your Bluetooth and we can communicate by Bluetooth. It's not related to the mobile communication, which is the infrastructure. My message will not forward it to base station and base station will forward it to another mobile. No, we can communicate with each other. We can make a Bluetooth networks. Five, ten students. All right, we can switch on our Bluetooth and we can communicate device to device, device to device. So if we are out of range, for example, here and here, and this is the range. 
this is the range. OK. And we have another device here in between. So this device number one would like to communicate with this device number two by using Bluetooth. But you can see it's out of range. This one, this is the range of this uh, uh, mobile, and this is the range of this mobile, which is out of range. I cannot send directly. But we have some device in between, so my message can be forwarded to this one, and this device will be forwarded to the end point. All right, so this one I can say this is a, like a router. All right, like like a router or some relay or some device in between. All right, so it's not necessary router will be like a physical router, a device that it's, it's in terms of ad hoc, it's might be any any mobile. All right, any mobile device like a, a PDA, this one. All right, like a mobile or like a headphone, this one. And this one like uh, laptops. PC. All right, so if it is within same range, they can communicate with each other, but it is out of range. They can they can forward to some device which is in between similar. So when I said ad hoc network, so that means there is no central unit, no central unit. Devices can communicate with each other directly. So this one we call it ad hoc network. So in terms of in terms of difficulties for for sure, this one will be more difficult uh, because there is no central point. If you would like to use your mobile and call, I mean, you don't care. You just press a call and base station will take care about everything. But in ad hoc, uh, in ad hoc, uh, we need to pay attention to to some important issues like a battery. OK, number one and like um, uh, security number two because if out of range then some some device in between gonna forward your message and some other uh, issues that must be i mean addressed perfectly all right but it is i mean example of of wireless this one actually is a bluetooth bluetooth example of bluetooth you can communicate you can communicate with each other even if you don't have even if you don't have a even if you don't have uh, access to the uh, this one, all right. All right. So wireless device, for example, you have smartphones. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm I'm at the UK and there are some constructions they are doing some i don't know what they are doing yes all right and they're preparing for the uh, ceremony convocation so yes there are some noise all right anyway uh, pdas the personal digital assistant and some other uh, smartphones like uh, blackberry and so this one actually it's some wireless devices in terms of cellular system in terms of cellular system uh, that means not when i said cellular it's it's a mobile all right it's a mobile communication uh, we have almost two standard or common standard the well-known standard uh, this one actually is the united states and canada uh, cdma all right we will discuss about this one the multiple access and they name their technologies as a CDMA code division multiple access. And most of the uh, rest of the world, they use GSM, which is European. So this one European standard and this one US standard. OK, and in between, for sure, we have the Japanese standard. Japanese, they have their own standard. Previously, Scandinavian countries, they have their own standard, but now they 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 merge with this one. And now we have moving fast, which is the Chinese, they trying to design their own their own standard. So we have this one, the most common, the European standard, US standard, and we have some other minor standard, this one Japanese and um, uh, China working very hard to to be independent in this in this matter. All right, so third 
generation network, <coughs> higher transmission speed, and this one will be uh, good for the broadband internet access. For fourth generation, we have uh, LTE and LTEA. All right, long term evolution and long term evolution advanced networks. And so we will, I mean, we'll discuss about this one. We will discuss about this one, about this one, about fourth generation. We will discuss about LTE and LTE advanced. And in terms of fifth generation, we will discuss about small cells and, and MIMO networks. All right, small cells and uh, this one, MIMO, that means multi input, multi output. So this one input, this one output, this one multiple input, multiple output uh, in terms of in terms of antenna. So that's why we have really high high speed uh, in terms of the uh, uh, fifth uh, generation. All right. So this is actually a summary on what you are going to to discover after. All right. So this is the. A Bluetooth, which is an example of ad hoc. All right, ad hoc. Ad hoc network, this one. All right, this one, ad hoc network. So this one actually it's links up to eight devices in uh, 10 meter area, okay, using low power uh, radio based communication and useful this one for personal networks. All right, so you can <coughs> you can create a networks um, uh, among you, for example, if you are a student doing some um, some research or some and would like to transfer you have uh, what you call it real time transfer within uh, i mean your your area all right some finding then maybe you can <coughs> create a, a bluetooth <coughs> all right so another one wireless network is a wi-fi so this is the standard all right standard for wi-fi 802.11 and we have different versions a, B, G, and N. All right. They are different in terms of um, in terms of some features and the, the frequencies. All right. And use access point, for example, device with a radio a receiver transmitter for connecting wireless device to a wired LAN. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. So this is a. A Bluetooth. All right, Bluetooth. Uh, so maybe we have a cell phone, normal mobile phone. <clears throat> we have a computer. We have a wireless keyboard. We have a personal digital assistant. We have a printer. So you can communicate. <clears throat> For example, from your mobile, you can send. All right, you can send um, uh, your document to the to the printer <coughs> either by using a Bluetooth or by using Wi-Fi. All right, you can use Wi-Fi. You can, I mean, buy Wi-Fi printer. All right, Wi-Fi printer. No need to to connect to your PC. No need to have the physical connection. And from PC, uh, you can send your document by using your own Wi-Fi. All right, at home, your own Wi-Fi. Uh, you can send your document to printer and you can print out even by using your phone also you can send your data to to printer and you can print it out all right so here uh, if we have a combination all right combination of wireless and wired all right so here we have an access point all right, access points like a gateway that you can pass through. And here we have um, uh, 
like a multi drop. All right, this one wired network. Local area network and here we have a router. Here we have a uh, router then from here. We can. Use the access point with the head of access point. I can move to this. Network and from this network I can move to the Internet. Even if I'm not connecting directly to. Uh, to the Internet, I maybe send my message to. Through the wired networks. <coughs> All right. So um, uh, hotspots, one or more access point in a public place to provide maximum wireless coverage for a specific area. OK, or you can create your own hotspots. <coughs> so that means uh, your friend can. I mean, can can enjoy the Internet access. Uh, through your device. Uh, but in terms of um, in terms of security, this one will be weak. For example, if you are in a restaurant and restaurants providing free. Uh, free Wi-Fi or right, free Internet access, then in terms of security will be not that much. All right, not that much because you are accessing some. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi. All right, and this one actually can be programmed, but need high skills actually can be programmed. So some data can be can be taken from your film from your device. All right, but this one I mean, generally speaking, all right, um, so not I mean, if you are visiting any restaurant, if you are traveling. Uh, airports, you are keep your your mobile without Internet connections. I'm um, generally speaking, all right. Uh, but most probably they are following some some policies to protect your your data. So that's why when we are traveling, for example, we can join to the airport Wi-Fi when we are at restaurants. Uh, we are accessing to their their Wi-Fi if we if we don't have the data. So it's um, I mean common. Um, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, entertainment, part of the entertainment, they provide a free connections. <clears throat> uh, WiMAX also wireless access, what's the range? All right, 31 miles. And this one required WiMAX antenna. All right, this one WiMAX around um, 2000 and, um, 2005, if I'm not mistaken, first time implemented in, in Singapore and all right, so uh, broadband cellular wireless, many cell service over Wi-Fi capabilities for the internet access. And also we have some some other like um, um, like as I mentioned, uh, RAN. All right, eight o dot twenty two. Uh, this is the uh, regional area networks. Regional area network, and this one actually need a specific tower. A specific tower. It's not. It's not available in the Middle East. Uh, in the US, they are implemented, and uh, in um, in Singapore, it's um, not yet. But uh, they used another technique. We call it TV white space. TV white space. All right. So. The idea almost similar to this one, but this one actually is more uh, huge coverage. It's a uh, regional area networks. And uh, TV white space, this one, they are taken from um, the bandwidth allocated to TV because, I mean, we are not really rely on TV, uh, especially from, let's say, let's say 1, 1 a.m. until Let's say 6 p.m. All right. This time, actually, the TV in most houses are are closed. I mean, most probably are closed. All right. After 6 p.m., when when people come back from from their walks to homes and students from their college to homes, they might, I mean, switch on the TV and uh, try to see what's are going on. So the idea is that since we have really long time with a few access to the TV band, then we can take that band and we can use it for providing Internet access. 
and this one actually is implemented in Singapore in 2017. In one of the uh, entertainment place, they call it Sintosa. All right, so they implement this one. So we have some other techniques we will try to discover while we're reaching to the uh, wireless part. And also we can use this one, the radio frequency identification, RFID. All right, so this one actually it's um, for short, um, short range. Um, uh, for example, you can open your door uh, by using this one. If you connect, if you if you have a, some uh, RFID device and your door is a smart door, your garage, all right, door, the main entrance. Then once you reach your home, you can just direct this one to the receiver then this door will uh, i mean will, will be opened automatically all right so this one also can be can we have some daily applications of of this one actually it's many applications and the last one which is this one actually is very important and we have a really huge um, uh, applications and very important we call it wireless sensor networks all right yes sensor networks so we have many many sensors for example sensors for temperature sensors for fire sensors for flood another sensor for um, or something earthquake or whatever all right so depend on the applications and all these sensors can communicate between each other. All right, all these sensors can communicate between each other. So we call it wireless sensor networks. So it's a sensor, but it's provided with Wi-Fi capability. For example, the Node MCU, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Node MCU. It's a sensor, all right, that can be used, for example, detecting, I mean, can you can, I mean, attach sensor with this one, and also it's provided with the Wi-Fi. All right, so all, all these type of sensors provided with Wi-Fi capability, and this one can, can be communicate and can be forward the message and finding to some central unit, some central unit. And this is actually it's widely used in, in in military activities. All right, military activities. We have some sensors, and these sensors can provide some some informations. All right, because this one actually it's no need for no need for infrastructure like an ad hoc, no need for centralized units. All right, within a specific geographical area, they can communicate with each other and also they can send to the central uh, central uh, units. <clears throat> OK, for this one, you can see many, many sensors. Communicate and after that for what data, this one actually we call it the whole system here. We call it data acquisition system. All right, data acquisition system. So that means collecting data from from different source, and after that combine at one central unit, perform the processing, and after that take action. All right, either send to internet or take some some action. All right. So this is for the <clears throat> for the wireless. All right, we're going to discover this important. Um, um, techniques, for example, um, the wireless local area networks, the ad hoc networks, uh, third generation, fourth generation LTE, LTEA, and fifth generation small cells and MIMO networks. And also pay some attention not to Bluetooth, not to Wi-Fi, uh, maybe to this one. Um, this one, all right, regional area uh, network and uh, wireless sensor network all right wireless sensor uh, network in terms of in terms of applications and in terms of um, design all right design uh, design level all right okay so the last part of this chapter which is the convergence all right convergence uh, for uh, convergence uh, telephone network and computer networks converging into a single digital network using the internet standard. All right. 
it and um, so that means all, all the technologies that we have done previously we said that we have wired networks in wired network we have some techniques and wireless networks we have some techniques so when it comes to convergence we need to make a link between all what we have done previously so that's why and this one we call it all ip networks all ip network all right all ip network cable companies providing voice service for example broadband more than 60 percent us internet use user have broadband access all right the very fast and uh, broadband wireless voice and data communication as well as internet access are increasingly taking the place of our broadband wireless platforms all right so integration of voice video and data or what we call it the multimedia all right multimedia communication which is we have voice and we have video and we have some data subtitles if you are watching a tv then you can you can hear the voice and you can see video and also you can read all right you can read some text so this is actually example of multimedia all right multimedia communication so how we can make all together work together so this one actually the convergence all right convergence so network that were previously transmitted using separate network will be merged into a single high speed multimedia network all right this one uh, high speed this one 5g all right so and 5g will really be a big difference compared to others and also some 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 surgeon can can perform their their operation remotely all right remotely by using the uh, the convergence uh, all the voice video data and also the actions of of uh, uh, what we call it robotics All right, so for example, in, in in the future, in terms of in terms of high speed, all this will be connected to internet or what you call it IoT. All right. Internet of things. That means people can communicate with with things and things also can communicate with with the people. Um, so this one actually it's referred to IP networks or we call it all IP networks. All IP networks. All right, so here actually is the access switch. Access switch and all in between we call it the telecommunication. All right, telecommunication. Uh, networks or if we are talking independently we call it telecommunication systems all right so all the circuits switched ATM switch uh, packet switch in between this one access and that one access the wireless all right the wireless access all refers to this one telecommunications All right, so this one in terms of telecommunications, telecommunications of voice, video, and or data, uh, longer distance, all right, longer distance, and if you are talking about data communication, movement of computer information by means of electrical or optical system. So when we said telecommunication, when we said telecommunication, it's a far moving of data from one place to another but it's a really a long distance all right long distance if we are talking about data communication normally we refer to computer 
computer networks that I mean from computer to computer. All right. So in terms of convergence, this one together with this one, it's a broadband communication. All right. Um, so, OK, guys, I think I'll stop here. All right, uh, the remaining actually is just. Um, um, IP multimedia subsystems or uh, the architecture that where we can all uh, devices, for example, and control sections, transport and this one we will, we will retouch it, revisit again once we reach to uh, wireless, especially in, in 5G. Then we will explain a little bit um, or some details about the uh, remote uh, remote actions. OK, guys, then. Um, um, as I mentioned, I will. I'm planning to make next class. Uh, Wednesday. Today is Monday, Wednesday on uh, at campus. All right, so I'll make an announcement and I will upload some materials. Then we will meet on um, on campus by by next Wednesday. We take some tutorial class then some we need to discuss directly for better understanding. All right, guys, so if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, so please let me know and we will uh, we will discuss together. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, guys. OK, Dr. Thank you. Um, thank have you. A nice day. All right, thank you, guys. All right, bye bye.